I'm St. Jean, and I am joined by Ryan Held, fresh from Paris. First of all, congratulations to you on your accomplishments. Not your first one, but I want to start with, you've won two golds now. Can you just try to summarize what it's like to win an Olympic gold? Yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Uh, in, in swimming, we, we well, sorry, in, in basketball, there's, you know, the corner three at the buzzer beater. Football has the Hail Mary. In swimming, it's winning Olympic gold. So to win one amazing feat to win two is truly remarkable yeah absolutely and when it comes to representing the united states you're able to do so for both of your gold medals two different olympics what does it feel like to represent and kind of wear that red white and blue well it's it's a hard process to get there there's about three hundred thousand swimmers registered with usa swimming so to be one of the you know the top thousand just to make trials and then to be the top six of those thousand to represent the United States on the, or just be the top two for the, make the Olympic team. That's an incredible feat in itself. But to, to wear the United States flag on your cap with your name on it, that's a great honor. And it's really cool to think about when you're representing your hometown, Springfield, Illinois, you know, every American, it's, it's an awesome place, an awesome feeling when you're, especially when you're on the podium and, you kind of take a, a little trip down memory lane of where you come from, who you're representing, and it just makes you proud. You yeah. know, this is, this is something you mentioned a little bit earlier to me before we started this conversation, but both of those medals had different motivations for you. Can you just kind of break down what pushed you towards both that 2016 and 2024 medal? Yes. Yeah, so the Rio medal is uh, I was, you know, in high school, just uh, going into my junior year of college, I was a uh, Kind of, kind of on a roll. I was unstoppable. I was dropping time every year. I was, you know, swimming out of my mind. I was a dark horse. No one knew who I was. So, to make the Rio team win an Olympic gold medal with the big names Nathan Adrian, Michael Phelps, and Caleb Dressel, and we kind of become a little like an unofficial image of the Rio Olympic Games is that picture of Michael hugging me after I'm crying on the podium. Uh, that was super cool to, be, that, that was, that, that Rio medal to me was like swimming, hard work, paying off. And the Paris medal is the mental, emotional side of the sport. So in 2020, in 2020 I was gonna try and make the Olympic team again. And if I did, and to get a second gold medal, I was going to retire and kind of move on and do a, move on from the sport of swimming. But I didn't, didn't make the team in 2021. So I, you know, it, and it was, it was kind of a hard thing because for so long, like in Rio, swimming brought me so much joy and passion and, and everything, and it was what I loved. And then all of a sudden, it caused me so much pain and anger and like kind of confusion, didn't know what to do. And moving on from 2021, just kind of, okay, I'll try one more meet. And that meet went really well. And okay, maybe I'll swim in the summer of 2022. And that meet went really well. So then like, okay, maybe, you know, like swimming and I's relationship is starting to get a little mend back together. And going into 2024 uh, Olympics trials, sorry, was kind of a, a very stressful thing because there was a lot of you know, reoccurrences of 2021 and, you know, a lot of thoughts, negative thoughts of, you know, what if I don't make this? What if I do, if I, you know, don't do this, do do that? And to put yourself in the arena emotionally, uh, mentally vulnerable to the crowds outside looking in, no one knows your own story and to succeed, that's what I'm really proud about uh, for Paris in 2024. It's not so much the, the swimming side of the sport, but for me, the Paris is the mental and emotional side of, of conquering those fears, those, those emotions. Now, this might be different because of those different motivations, but in 2016, 2024, two different gold medals. How do you celebrate a gold medal? What is that feeling like and then kind of the <laughs> aftermath of being able to celebrate what you were setting out to do? Uh, so, <laughs> so 2020, 2016, I was a junior in college. Um, I just... I don't know how like appropriate this is, but I mean, it just came a junior in college. And I just turned twenty twenty or turned twenty one in trials, so that celebration was a few a few nights of the bars in Raleigh. Uh, but here in twenty twenty four, 
I, I mean, I'm eight years older. I think I'm a little bit more mature and a little bit calmer now. I think to me, celebrating 2024, this medal is, is hanging out with my family, my wife, and spending kind of more quality time with my family and friends. Um, in 2016, I was trying to tell everyone and show everyone that I just won because I, I, I was a younger and uh, probably more of a fiery Ryan than I am now. Oh, absolutely. And now you've gotten to compete with and against a ton of incredible athletes, both at the Olympics and in the trials. Aside from yourself and aside from Michael Phelps, that might be the easiest answer. Is there a swimmer that has stood out as being maybe the most impressive, even if it's someone that maybe you don't maybe think gets the recognition they deserve? Hmm. Most impressive swimmer I swam with. That's a great question. Do I have time to think? Yeah, you can take okay. your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it could be men or women. Just someone that you've gotten to work with or see in the pool that really caught your eye. And it could be someone that maybe is a little underrated, a little underappreciated. Hmm. Probably. The first person that comes to mind, I'll, I'll give like two answers. Okay. Um, First person that comes to mind is a University of Texas swimmer named Will Lacone, who is an incredible guy, great guy. You know, he would, he's, the, he's like the kind of guy that would wake up at, if you call him at 3 a.m., all right, I'll, I'll hop in my car and come pick you up. Um, but he is just super nice, super friendly. Uh, and he, but he just always, he just swam in incredibly, tough events, the 100 breaststroke and 200 breaststroke, and he got third three or four times at trials. Just like always right there, um, but he is just a great guy, perseverance and everything. Um, and then another person who I swam with is, um, honestly, I feel like, I mean, Katie Ledecky is incredible. She is just, She's, she is just who she is. She's amazing. She, and she's, I just never hear her complain. She, she gets thrown and pulled in a lot of different directions with media and people try to ask her questions and try and like trip her up, try to talk about her rivalry with Australia. But she handles questions and media so well. She like treats every, everything very elegantly and she, she, so she was just selected the uh, closing ceremonies flag bearer, and I think that's a great choice. She's, she's super well spoken, very kind, very. She was our team captain, and just tries to be inclusive. And at the end of the day, is an incredible, incredible swimmer. Owning the top 20 times and like the 800 in the mile is unbelievable. So, I would say yeah, Will Lacone, Katie Ledecky, both two people who like are just you know great people who I'm just blessed to have been uh, cross paths with in the sport of swimming. Perfect. So we have two more questions kind of career Olympics based. Okay. First off, this relating a little bit to the last one, living in the Olympic villages for a little while, you yes. get to experience not only a lot of cool cultures and people, but you get to live alongside a bunch of incredible Olympians. Is there anyone that you've had any cool moments or experiences with that would be fun to share? Hmm. What's crazy is that you don't realize how small the gymnasts are because when you're, they're on TV with other gymnasts, there's no context, there's no like, uh, like scale. But when you see them against like other swimmers, or like one swimmer, his name's Kieran Smith, who's like 6'6", he was standing next to uh, Simone Biles and that was like total culture shock, glass was shattered, wow. There is a height difference. She probably only came up to his hips, but he, so, but when you're on TV, you don't see, like, you don't see the extremes because there's no scale, there's no, like, middle ground. Um, so they, they lived in our building, the Team USA building. That was really cool. Um, hmm, who, what other athlete? I'm trying to think of another sport. I met some BMXers. Those are Team USA people. They are really cool. Um, but, but no, what's just cool about the village, especially the dining hall, is you just see the different types of bodies that produce the best athletes. So, you know, there's, there's, this, there's this Georgian Olympic weightlifter named Lasha, 
who's like 330 pounds, and he is huge, but he is so strong. And then there's Simone Biles, who's like five foot zero, but she is like dominant in the in gymnastics. And then there's, you know, seven, seven three Argentinian bas- or volleyball players who are just towering over people. And it's so cool just to see the different bodies of what makes each athlete the very best. Absolutely. And now the last question I'll have career related wise is just what's next for you? What's your next step career wise? Um, I think I'm going to kind of transition from having a swimming job to more of a dry job, (laughs) not waking up at 5 a.m. and jumping into a cold pool every morning. So I'm going to transition from, yeah, swim. I'm not, I mean, I'm going to be in LA 2028, whether that's volunteering or a spectator, because I'm, I'm watching and hearing the crowd go crazy for French swimmers. I've got to be part of that for LA 2028. I'm so excited. Uh, but in terms of swimming, yeah, I'm going to slowly transition from the pool to start reaching out, connecting, making networks, uh, sorry, networking, making connections to hopefully get a job in, um, I got my master's in geographic information systems stands for GIS. So hopefully get a job somewhere in that field. Now transitioning kind of locally, you obviously represent the United States and you touched mm-hmm. on this a little bit in your other answer, but you represent Illinois, you represent Central Illinois and you represent Springfield. Can you speak to what that means to you to be able to represent those kind of three, maybe smaller locations than just the United States as a whole? Yeah, it's cool because you, I feel like I, I bring attention to, you know, people who wouldn't normally think they're being, I guess, like represented on the, on the big stage because it always seems like there's always a really good athlete from somewhere else or you know the big cities always produce a lot of athletes so to be kind of from a small smaller intimate more uh, more people know each other kind of community like Springfield is, is really cool and just also it kind of proves that anyone anyone can come from anywhere you don't need the big city facilities the the sports science the you know, the, the crazy, I mean, like the crazy high profile coaches, you just, as long as you've got, you know, goals, determination, drive, work ethic, you can, you can be successful anywhere. It uh, doesn't matter the place. And so I think it's really cool to come from Springfield where I grew up in a four lane pool. Uh, that's, that is, you know, all abysmal to uh, other Olympians who are training in 50 meter pools, but, you know, with, with just small incremental goals achieving those one at a time, those accumulate, and landed in a pretty extraordinary territory. Now, you visited a Springfield YMCA today. I know it's not the first time you've come back to visit a Springfield YMCA. Can you talk about that experience of just being able to come back and see kids that look up to you and maybe that inspire that next generation of swimmers? Yeah, it was cool. Um, some people showed me some pictures from 2016 when I was back, and I just looked totally different. It looked so young. It just... I mean, I know what I was saying back then, but I don't think I was very wise and like I had no idea what I was even really saying. But now coming back, I feel like I've learned so much more through life and everything. And there, because there was experiences in college and NC State that like, you know, people always say you learn so much more outside of the pool than inside the pool. And there were those things. And, but I feel like I couldn't quite learn from them until after I graduated from college. And now outside looking in, it made so much sense. And so to come back to the why and I feel like actually give some uh, kind of parting wisdom felt really cool. And just showing that, you know, it wasn't what, not a fluke, but 2016 was there, but I I stayed dominant for, you know, the eight years in between 2016 and 2024 and proving that Again, kind of what I said earlier, anyone can come from anywhere um, just with, with goals and hard work and dedication. Now, when it comes to your experience at kind of swimming in Springfield, maybe in those four-lane pools mm-hmm. or at the YMCA or whatever it may have been, can you talk about starting there and growing into an Olympian and what that process was like for you? Yeah, um, I would say at a fairly young age, I've always wanted... I knew I always wanted to be an Olympian, and 
training and racing to be that uh, was, was always the goal. Uh, but I would say, I, um, I would say around like seventh grade when I, I broke my leg playing indoor soccer, that's when I, I quit all the other sports. I just became a swimmer full time. And that's really when I accelerated from a decent central Illinois area swimmer to a higher caliber level swimmer for like the state of Illinois and maybe Indiana, Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri. Um, and that's really kind of when the dream went from kind of like, you know, the kid hitting the corner three, a kind of the childhood fantasy to, okay, actually, you know, if, if, I, if I do this right and I, you know, give it my 100%, I think I can really do this. And then when I got into college, dropped even more time, got better, got stronger. Uh, going into Olympic trials, I was 14th seed or something. That's really when again, uh, n even another step up of, okay, this next year, I'm going to, you know, eat right, sleep better, do everything. I'm going to be not just an athlete in the pool. I'm going to be an athlete the other 20 hours of the day and be the absolute very best I can be. And I think that's what got me to... Uh, be on the 2016 Olympics. Now, is there a day, an event, or even just a stretch of events where you recall it's just like, that was when I realized that I could do this? Probably nationals in 2015 in San Antonio. I, I broke 50 seconds for the first time in the 100 meter free in prelims, because before that my seed time was like 52 or something. So I broke, I was like 49.98. You know, like, awesome, I made the B final. This was so cool. As a freshman, I made the B final of the national swim meet. This is, this is really cool. And then in that, that final swim, that, um, I just, honestly, I kind of swam fearless, just went for it, and I was uh, dropped almost a whole another second, and I was 49-1. And that's what put, and I won the B final. And so that's when that moment of, whoa, Okay, this is, yeah, th this is right. If I, if I do everything right, I can be on that top six spot for the Olympic trials next year. Perfect. And now just two more questions for you. Mm -hmm. When it comes to being a good swimmer, kind of that, that local, maybe you stand out to mm -hmm. a nationally recognized swimmer, someone who can accomplish gold, what separates those swimmers? What separates the good from the great? Hmm, I think... I think drive, drive, like determination, drive is a big part. Um, I mean, man, there's, there's so many characteristics. Uh, being coachable, uh, having the humility to, you know, not know everything, being open to coaching, open to criticism. So I, there's, there's, so Nick Saban has a quote that was like, good players don't want coaching. Like, great players, uh, like, are open to coaching. And then elite players seek out coaching. So that, that quote always stuck with me of, you know, if you, if you want to be better, you know, take, take the extra time, take the, uh, ask the questions. Hey, coach, what do you think about this turn? What do you think about that? Uh, that's having the drive to be better. And then the humility is to kind of accept, like, okay, I don't have the best technique. I don't have this. I actually need to work on this. And um, another, another thing, too, is we, at NC State, we always talked about you're an athlete for four hours of the pool, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. But that's, I mean, that, yes, you're an athlete, but you're also an athlete for the other 20 hours of a day. So are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating the right things? Are you, you know, making, like, smart decisions outside of the pool? And that's the getting 1% better every day. Those 20 hours are the margin, not the four hours in the pool. Because every great swimmer is gonna work hard in the pool. It's, you go from ordinary to extraordinary outside of the pool and all these extracurricular things. Absolutely, now the last question for you will be maybe something a little bit related to what you just said, maybe some advice that you gave to the kids earlier, but if you were to give advice to aspiring swimmers in the central Illinois area, in Springfield, what kind of things would you tell them? I would tell them, Set, set goals, because that's a, a tangible, you know, kind of uh, end point, and set small incremental goals. So what that's, that, like, for example, in swimming, it could be make districts, 
uh, podium at state and then try and get a nationals cut and or doing these, just these small incremental goals build up over time. They accumulate, they get bigger and bigger. And there's, there's tons of sports psychology research that kind of suggests when you, when you hit these goals, you get this sense of accomplishment. You get an extra little kick of motivation, of drive. And so when you hit these goals, you get more and more driven to hit the next goal, more enthusiasm. And it just kind of builds up, builds up, accumulates. And before you know it, your, your goals are you know, to make Olympic trials, to finals, to do this. And um, eventually you, kind of, you end up on the Olympic swim team.